All right, now let's take a look at transitions. In frame of motion, transitions let us define how animatable values change over time, and we can use them to customize the look and feel of our animations. In the animations we've created so far, we've seen the default transition, which has this bouncy feel with a slight overshooting in the end. To demonstrate how we can create custom transitions, first let's remove what we've created earlier and instead add a simple animation that will use X property to move the box to 100 pixels to the right. Since we'll be tweaking different transition settings, it'll be helpful to see how our custom transitions compare to the default one. For that reason, we'll be working with a copy of this box which I will paste below, and the box on the top will be there for reference. Alright, so in frame of motion there are two ways to define a transition, either using a spring or a twin. Let's take a look at spring transition first. Spring transition uses spring physics to describe how animatable value changes over time. The details of it may be a bit difficult to comprehend, so instead of getting into the weeds of spring physics, let's just play with spring properties and see how they affect the look of the animation. To define custom transition, first we need to specify its type by setting type to spring. Spring transition is controlled by three main properties, stiffness, mass and damping. All of them are optional, but for now let's set stiffness to 100, mass to 1, and damping to 10. These are the values that will be used by default if we don't provide them, and we can set transition type to spring for the first box to confirm that their transitions are identical. So let's take a look at spring properties. First we have stiffness, which describes the stiffness of a spring, and larger values will result in more sudden and pronounced movements. Let's set it to 300, and now box seems to move faster. Then we have mass, which describes a mass of an object hanging on a spring, and larger values will result in longer delay oscillations. Let's set it to 3 and save the changes to see its effect. Finally, damping describes the strength of the opposing force, so larger values will result in fewer oscillations and vice versa. We can set damping to 5, save changes, and now it will take longer for the box to settle in its final position. We can also set damping to 0, and in the absence of the opposing force, our spring will oscillate indefinitely. Let's remove it before we get dizzy. So that were the properties of spring transitions. Now let's take a look at twin transitions. Twin transitions use the duration and easing function to describe the animation, so they work pretty similar to CSS animations. To see them in action, let's set type to twin for both boxes, and for the second one we'll set duration to 0 0.3, and ease to ease out. Again, these are the default values that will be used for twin transitions if none is specified. Let's save the changes and see how it looks. We can control the duration of this animation by using duration prop. Let's set it to 1 second, for example, and now this animation will take 1 second to complete. To control the curve that describes the change of animation speed, we use ease property. Is out curve that we have by default has a slight deceleration by the end of the animation. By contrast, is in will have a slow start followed by a slight increase of speed. Here's a list of all built-in easing functions. You can play with them to see how they differ from each other. Twin transitions also allow us to create animations that can repeat multiple times. We create such animations by using yo-yo, flip or loop property. To see the difference between them, first let's remove one of the boxes, and for the remaining one I'll set animation duration to 2 seconds and ease to anticipate. With anticipate easing, the box will move a tiny bit in the opposite direction before moving the right way, so in our case it will move a bit to the left before moving to the right. Ok, now let's set flip property to 1, which means that we want our animation to repeat one extra time. Save the changes and see the result. When we use flip property, our animation will use the same easing both when animating forwards and backwards, so we have anticipation in both cases. If instead of flip we use yo-yo property, then the backward animation will play in reverse, so we still have anticipation in the beginning of the forward animation, but not in the beginning of the backward one. Lastly, we can replace yo-yo with loop 
property, which will simply reset the animation to the beginning before replaying it. All of these props take a number that specifies how many times we want our animation to repeat, and if we want them to loop forever, we can set them to infinity. Let's try setting flip to infinity and confirm that the animation never stops. Let's change it back to 1. The last property that we're going to look at is repeat delay, which allows us to set the delay between the repetitions. Let's set it to 1, and now our animation will rest for 1 second before repeating itself. Ok, so far we've used a single transition that applied to all animatable properties, but we can also provide separate transitions per property. To see that in action, first let's add a second property Y and animate it to 200 and then adjust our transition to run only once, and for the duration of one second. When we save the changes, we can see that both X and Y properties take one second to animate. Now instead of applying the same transition to all properties, we can give each property its own transition. For example, we can set X property to be a twin transition with a duration of one second, and Y to be a twin transition with a duration of two seconds. When I save the changes, we can see that now Y animation takes twice longer to finish than X animation. Alright, now let's see how we can apply what we've learned about transitions to fix the issue with the model. I'm going to navigate to the root path and open model component. We've already seen that when the model opens, there is some undesired overshooting, which creates a gap between the model and the bottom of the screen. We can fix that by adding a custom transition to the panel. We'll set the type to a spring and add three times more resistance to the spring by setting damping to 300. I'll save the changes and open the model. And we can see that on one hand we fixed the problem, but now our animation is taking too long to complete. To fix that issue, we'll increase the stiffness of the spring to 300. I'll save the changes and open the model, and now our animation finally looks good.